Welcome to Ancestors, a game that allows you to traumatize and neglect your children for your own personal benefit. I, I, mean, I mean, it's a game about human evolution. First order business is naming our lineage. After long internal conflict, I carefully chose the name Duke Dennis and clicked confirm. After literally three minutes of unskippable mineral ads, we spawn in a cave. Scared and distraught, I end up staring at a fish. In what seems to be a psychotic fit, we run away from our families, like Kanye in 2021, and consume our newfound fish. It reminds me of yesterday, at around 2am, when I snuck into the kitchen and started eating all of the uncooked rice. Now before you judge me, it was 2am on a Friday, and that was the only thing in the kitchen. Sometimes, you do what you gotta do. Out of nowhere, a huge bird swoops down to attack me. With ample time to react, I make the smart choice to sit there and do nothing. You know, maybe he's just misunderstood. He proceeds to drill his beak through my skull in front of my only kid. The useless child somehow misses every single branch to grab and slams onto the floor. What a noob. Reminds me of this one time I fell out of a tree and landed on the back of my neck, so I can kinda relate, big fella. The little guy is now tasked with finding a hiding spot, but clearly has PTSD as he is seeing weird faces and hearing things that are not there. Someone give this man some fentanyl or something, I'm sure that'll help. I resurrect as a new monkey and am told to find the lost child. Though a little hesitant at the thought of committing a good deed, I want to advance in the game. So I grab the fentanyl for him and head out. I figure out how to use my ears and quickly discover that he is the loudest thing in the whole jungle. Like, good job blowing your cover, idiot. You've surely not got long now. I somehow reach him without any of us dying and begin explaining to him how he's gonna miss soccer practice and that I brought him some fent for his nerves. After a little convincing, he comes out of the hole. I take the little orphan back to the lads, but I decide he's not traumatized enough just yet, so I decide to keep him. I spot a jaw-dropping milf walking by, so I go give her a little chat. Turns out her name is Pooh, a woman of class I see, so I introduce her to my Riz and start eating the fleas off her back. And just like that, I got a girlfriend. Try this method at home boys, it always works. I get this beautiful cutscene that I end up skipping due to my ADHD and apparently miss an important part of the story as I'm teleported into a tree and given a mission to find a meteor. I imagine this is the same sensation as getting roofied because I randomly ended up in a tree with no recollection of how I got here. Apparently there's a meteor I gotta go find, but I see the corpse of the dead monkey from the beginning and decide to seek revenge on that evil bird that decided to end my life in front of my kid. I grab one of his eggs and feeling safe, I decide to sniff it and get attacked again. This time, however, I'm smart enough to correctly read his intentions and maneuver. Suck it, you big dumb bird. In a state of panic, I jump off the tree and miss every opportunity to grab onto something and smack into the ground, breaking both of my legs. Now I'm bleeding very heavily and limping due to pain, but hey, at least I matured a neuron, am I right? I grow more concerned with this berry than the gallons of blood I'm losing every second, and get distracted eating leaves off a magical bush that seems to heal my broken legs. But unfortunately, this magical leaf does not stop the miles of blood I'm losing, so I snap out of it and am forced to move on. I run back to camp in hopes of sleeping the injuries off. But you guessed it, this doesn't happen, because I'm an idiot and why would sleeping heal an open wound? In fact, sleeping makes the blood loss much worse, so I'm forced to act as fast as I can. I climb a tree in hopes of finding a bird or something to stuff into my wound, but instead I spot a beehive. This will have to do. I return back home and confirm that I do indeed have a second hand that I can use, and that ape together are strong, after all. With these previous conspiracies solved, I head back out to find that meteorite. But again, I encounter the bird's nest. I jump in and grab an egg. And like the man who took my grandpa's wheelchair, I was gone as fast as I had come. I begin to eat his child a few feet away from his nest and get food poisoning. In my infinite wisdom, I decide that just like in real life, when tummy hurt, you drink water. I finally find the asteroid, but there's a 50 foot snake right next to it, and I opt not to take the risk of saying hello to the big fella. So I go around him. But alas, there was another protector of the ancient stone. Your mom. Oops, I mean some kind of big giant pig. I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Moving on, the pig ends up being pretty nice, but dies a few seconds later, so I seize the moment and scurry away with my loot. I end up back at home and decide it's probably time to make a weapon. However, 
I have to teach this fully grown monkey what a rock is. Like, how are you this old and still this dumb? Sorry, I'm projecting. That's what my parents say every time I see them. Anyways, enough with the victimizing. I start smacking two rocks together and hope it does something. It ends up making a grindstone. And all this energy I just put in with my newly discovered hand was just a waste of time. Like the genius I am, I decided to give it the people's eyebrow and run it back. But who knew Einstein would be so wrong because I did the exact same thing again and this time it worked. I begin to smack the rock onto a branch and only because I'm so cool and strong, it turned into a stick. I hit it some more and it became a sharpened stick. Perfect for brutally killing animals and further traumatizing the child on my back. I head out and hear another fellow monkey. I wonder how she got down here when she tells me she fell from our cave. So I scold her for leaving the kitchen before continuing on my way. What a dumb broad. Hit the like button if she's a dumb broad. While on the look for the other stranded monkeys, I see the huge snake from earlier. And just like my love life, the big girl shows interest in me. I run away and start screaming as loud as I can. Luckily, she takes the hint and leaves. So I steal one of her eggs. And like a dog under a train, I crack the egg open. But I get sick again. The sneaky broad poisoned the egg I took from her. No, no, I just can't cope with doing something stupid, so I blame it on others. You know how it is. While looking for some water, this tarantula jumps out to attack me. Like, chill, big dog. I didn't mean to startle you. He says, oh, you're good, G. Keep it pushing. And he runs away. I do as the tarantula says by scooping up some water, patching my wound, and keeping it pushing like a real G. I struggle to make it back home because it's pitch black, and would you believe it, I can't see in the dark, but I make it home in the end, and I hit the hay in anticipation for the big day tomorrow. I really don't understand the purpose of this game, so I made my own. I'm just gonna traumatize this little kid as much as I can before I eventually die, so that's what I immediately start doing. In a PTSD-induced panic, I leap off a tree and break my leg again. Man, am I really starting to feel bad for my legs. While attempting to fix my femur, a venomous snake bites and poisons me. I'm now moving as fast as a paraplegic with no wheelchair. You know, like one of them crawlers from Black Ops Zombies. I hobble my way to water and try to get rid of the poison. And just when I think I'm safe, another tiger jumps at me. Like ladies chill, there's enough for me to go around. Luckily, he's aiming with his elbows and missed my head, hitting me in the arm. This guy is a body shot warrior, if I've ever seen one. Now I have multiple broken bones, I've been bitten by a mambo, and I'm bleeding all over my kid. I continue drinking my water right where I got attacked like a chad, and most of my injuries disappear. I decide I traumatized the little guy enough for today, and head back home. I proceed to try and sleep my open wound off again, but I wake up with very little health, being as I probably lost two quarts of blood overnight. Luckily, I use my big brain to spot some fiber, and try my best to get up the tree without dying. This process though takes way too long. Like geez big guy, I know you just lost 80% of your blood, but just climb the tree and stop overreacting, would you? I finally make it to the fiber, and I use the last bit of my life to rest on this branch. I rub the fiber all over my body like a jock with Axe body spray in the gym locker room and jump off the tree. I attempt this cool move I saw in a James Bond movie once, and having not perfected it, I fall 30 feet slamming onto a rock. Unfortunately, my monkey seems to have contracted asthma and needs his inhaler after only taking three steps. So I decide to switch to the girlfriend I made and head out to look for a new home. To my shock, the girl monkey works a lot harder than the guy I just was. Wow, what a girl boss. Go women! Tony the Tiger, though, seems to be against women as he tries to slide tackle me. But being the girl boss I am, I reject his advances and escape up a tree. Reminiscent of a young boy attending the freak-offs, I get swarmed by huge snakes and decide to go investigate. But the effects of the perk 30 I just ate off screen kick in, so I opt to cut my losses and sleep in a tree. I wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. So I start eating out of fruit and get ready to leave. But before I leave... I grab some protection, because you never know where EDP could be lurking. Like seriously, I swear this guy just teleports across the country every time I hear of him. Anyway, I stumble across this giant cave that fittingly looks like the opening to Hollow Earth, and I mark it in my head for later. I decide to sniff this random rock in hopes of a good time, but a tiger spots me stealing his product and jumps me. 
I hit the classic, he's behind me, isn't he? And like the young prodigy I am, I dodge the attack. I climb up a tree and start aggressively laughing at him. Last time I laughed this hard, I saw a little kid tumbling down concrete stairs outside of a school. He decides the best course of action after this is to get up and absolutely punch the railing, breaking his hand. Like, what an idiot. Anyway, I proceed to cohabitate with this pig I found drinking. This reveals a deep progression of character, so I'd like some congratulations in the comments, please. Like America in the 1940s, I proceed to segregate myself from him as I do not want to be attacked. I follow the pig for a while and watch him get chin checked by a huge snake. A little offended that this huge snake just ate your mom, I try to get revenge at him by throwing a coconut, but absolutely miss, giving the snake unbearable secondhand embarrassment and he leaves. Minus 10,000 aura. I sniff the dead pig, rip a chunk of meat off of it, and scurry away. Not at all pleased by my performance, I begin to eat the chunk of meat and get very sick. Apparently, I'm a vegan and repulse at the thought of eating meat. But like an absolute sigma, I manage to push through the guilt and eat the whole thing. After a long, hard day of victimizing myself, I decide to sleep in a tree again. Taking inspiration from Playboy Cardi, I wake up like it's the first of the month and start swinging through trees and munching on fruit as my breakfast. I stumble upon a warthog and decide to try and kill it. I aggravate him with some monkey business and stab the lad with my big stick. Too caught up in the thought of monkey business, my prey runs away. Unfortunately, I'm at the Usain Bolt of pigs, so I break off. Not because I couldn't catch him, I just simply stopped to spare his ego. I decide this rock smells a little funky, and following in the footsteps of Neon, I get jumped again. At this point, I'm so used to getting randomly attacked, I feel like Jake Paul because it's every day, bro. While I let that horrible joke sit, I concoct a plan to get the tiger off my behind. I jump and run to the nearest tree to grab a stick. Then I remember that this female monkey has way more balls than the male monkey I was earlier. So I call the big fella's bluff and charge him with my stick. I one pump him and crack his shield. And before I have time to regret my decision, I jump back to the tree and run. And by run, I mean run back to the same spot I just got attacked and smashed a coconut with the rock I sniffed earlier. I look up and what do you know it? I knew I could smell your mom. I pull up my big boy pants and decide to introduce myself. Perhaps the cold approach wasn't the best method and she attacks me. In an act of 100% self-defense, I protect my kid by stabbing the big girl again. Wow, does this game make you feel like the baby sometimes. I can make another yo mama joke on how she's so fat she got knocked back too, but that's too far. I decide now is probably a good time to flee the scene, so I head back home. I make it home, sleep, eat a bad berry, sharpen my stick, inform the boys that it's time we move base, and we make our way out. For some reason, we opt to let the baby travel on its own. What a great way to traumatize the little guy. Moving with the rainfall was our best chance to make our move unheard. And seeing how the rain just started, we should have plenty of time. And the rain stopped. Now with God himself trying to prove me wrong, I instruct this snake to evacuate, which gets me a little thirsty, so we all go drink. Out of the corner of my eye, I see that one of our children is drowning in a river. Thinking this would be the perfect time for a little trauma, I opt not to help and begin to drink water within an arm's length of him. I notice this tired, elderly man barely being able to walk, and I can't help but make fun of him in my head, like any normal person would do. And luckily, we arrive at our camp safe and sound. Now this seems like the perfect place to end the video, so if you enjoyed, please feel free to drop a like. They always help. And if you made it this far, thank you. You really mean a lot. And peace. See y'all in the next one. Kablamo, kablamo.